Hey everybody, Matt from Eastwood. Happy Hug a Friend Day and Walk at Lunch Day. Uh, we're doing a live tech session here. Uh, if you guys haven't tuned into one of those before, uh, we try to make them as informative as possible. So if you're logged in on Facebook or YouTube, you can join the chat with Scotty C over here. And I'll be over here to be able to answer any of your questions. And yes, I got my walk on lunch done. We did uh, a little under two miles in half an hour. So it was a good wow, day. Wow, look at that. Yep. You have a little bit of sweat on your brow there. <laughs> yep. Uh, so. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, shoot them over to Scott about the products, what he's wearing, his cologne, whatever you'd like. Um, so today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite little, uh, little sanders that we offer. This is our combination uh, belt disc sander that we offer. Um, this guy has a half horsepower, uh, runs at about 3400 RPMs. And uh, it's really handy if you guys don't have a lot of room in your shop. Um, it has a cast iron base, so it is heavy enough. It's not going to walk around real crazy um, if you put it on a bench. Uh, but it's also light enough that you can pick it up, move it around. You can put it back under the bench, um, and you can do uh, a lot of your sanding and fabrication, uh, you know, tuning things up with this. So I figured I'd show you a little bit of the couple of my favorite features on it. Um, we have a little a little action shot here. It'll show you all the movements that this this guy does, um, kind of uh, ghosted together there. So you can see the base moves. And also the top section here also moves, um, so you can change the angle of the top uh, to get in a position that you need to sand. And you can also change uh, the plate here at the, at the disc section so that you can actually do a miter or if you want to put a chamfer on something, we can adjust this. And there's a little, it's hard for you guys to see here on this side, but there's actually a little gauge on the side so you can change your angle. So if we want to go say about 15 degrees there, we can do that. And then we can slide that across and we can do our sanding however we want. So that's really handy if you're doing something, um, especially like if you're doing heavier stock like this. I can show you guys an example. Um, if you have a piece of heavier stock like this and we want to put a bevel or a chamfer on this, what we can do is we can put this on. Put it against like that. Like we, like I can see, it's going to start putting a a slight bevel on that piece there. So. Um, this is just a scrap piece so we grab. Joe's going to try and grab a shot here close up of it. Good. So you can see we started putting the bevel in there on that. Now this piece wasn't cut exactly straight, but if we use the miter there and keep everything square and I keep sanding it in, it's going to sand it square and then also put that bevel in on. But you can see just real quick it's putting the bevel in on the thicker piece. So you can change that. You can also change it right here on the miter section. We can change it at the angle that we want also as well. Um, when we're sanding. And you can also, of course, just take this out if you're just uh, freestyling it. You can do that as well. And I'll put this back to zero here to the level. Uh, now, another thing that's cool is the, uh, the top of this actually moves up, which a lot of the you know, bigger units that you see don't, don't necessarily do that. But with this, it has a little Allen, an Allen key on the back side here. And you can lift this guy up like so, and now we can use this top section. Um, if you're sanding something that's large or you know space is an issue, we can take like this piece here, turn this on. So I could work a little more comfortably like that uh, when I'm sanding. And then you can see what, what I like to do just like that. I have a little line that I drew here on the piece. Try and, there we go. So there's a little line I drew. So if I was making a patch panel and maybe it was just a hair too large and I trimmed, uh, I drew my line where I wanted to trim it, 
Uh, instead of trying to cut it um, and have some trouble with cutting it, sometimes I'll just use the sander and we can just sand it and round that edge until it comes down to our line and we know that it's going to be a good fit. It's nice and controlled. Uh, it's, it comes with 80 grit paper on it, so it has enough tooth on it that you can, you can actually take some metal away pretty quickly. Um, so you do have to be a little careful that you're not pushing too hard if you're doing sheet metal. Um, and there's a little stop here as well. Put it down on the stop, tighten it up, and we're back to where we were. Um, another thing that's really nice with this is the belt changing is really simple. So if you need to change the belt um, on this, it's, it's about as simple as it gets. Uh, so you loosen this right here as a quick release. What that allows you to do is, is uh, slide the belt off and, oh no, give me one second, let me put this up so we don't get caught here. So what we can do is we can put this up like so, and because it, since it's the quick release, as long as you have it adjusted pretty good there, we can swap the belt off here, easy to change. And if we put this back on, um, we can slide it on again, lift it up, and we can slide this guy back on. So it makes changing belts uh, pretty nice in the comparison to some, some machines. Uh, it makes it a little difficult. There we go. So you just have to be careful when you're putting this on, you don't catch the edge of the, of the paper, because what you can do is you can actually rip that edge, and then when you start up the machine, it's going to turn into a projectile. Jeez. Oh no. I forced it on. All right. There we go. Got too much walking in it at lunch. I can't think straight. All right. There we go. Back where we need to be. So you just push this quick release, that tightens it up. Now what you need to do then, when you turn this back on, this little knob here, uh, we can use this knob to adjust our traction on this, how it tracks. So you can see we're off on this side here, and we have an overhang there. So we're going to turn the knob just a little bit. we got it centered up pretty good. One thing you want to make sure is um, you want to turn this knob just a little bit at a time because what happens is it'll actually keep moving just a little bit after you, after you move the knob. So if you move it and you don't instantly see it where you want it to be, give it a second to, to settle out and then uh, you can move it a little bit more. But it doesn't take much of turning of this knob for it to move the belt off. So you can get this, uh, this lined up and adjusted really quickly. Uh, which is nice. I don't, you know, when you have a belt that needs changing, you want as little downtime as possible. Um, so that's changing the belt on this. Uh, this, this, um, the the disc side uses just a pressure sensitive, just a sticky back uh, paper here that you can put on there. And you can change the grit on this, of course, since you're using sticky back paper. If you want to put something a little more aggressive, like 36 grit, you can most definitely do that. Or if you want to change and do your your uh, finish work, you can do that with uh, with some finer grit on there. Scott, do we have any questions? Sure. Yeah, one of the questions got asked was, uh, you know, if there's different grits of, uh, available for this. And I figured I'd quick cover it. Sure. Both the sanding belts and the, uh, the sticky ones for the, the face of it are available in 80, 120, and 240. So you certainly have a, a range of options depending on how much material you want to remove and how fast. Yeah, good. And so uh, if you guys want to, another little trick I like to do with the, um, with the tungsten, so when I'm, if I'm sanding tungsten for, for uh, TIG welding, uh, what I actually do is I will use the belt sander, I'll either pick a strip on the belt that I will use it on, or I'll pick a section on the disc that I will actually use to, to uh, sharpen my tungsten.
I'll give a real nice finish for Joe to get in there. So I'll give you a nice um, sharpened tungsten. Uh, since it's a nice 80 grit, I, I, uh, it's probably something in my head, I always joke, but uh, I feel like the, the less aggressive than using like a, um, a bench grinder, it puts less aggressive scratches in it, and I feel like for low amperage welding, in my head at least, it's a little better. But, so that's what I do, I pick a piece of the belt, and I only use that section because you don't want to contaminate uh, your tungsten. Uh, if it's something you're doing a lot of rough grinding, you share a shop space, this may not be the best bet for you, but that's what I like to do in my shop. Uh, another thing that's nice is if you rough cut something, like with a chop saw here, what you'll get is this kind of rough cut there with what's left over. Belt sander is really great for taking off the burrs. So, Take that off, put a nice bevel on the piece really quickly, which is nice. They put a nice little bevel on it, got rid of all that rough uh, leftover material from cutting, and we're ready to go. We can start welding it up and fitting it up and welding it up. Any other questions we got about this fantastic tool today, Scott? No, we're good. You did a great job explaining it. Awesome. Like yeah, this we... thing is great. Uh, it's, a, it's a little... It's a small sander, but it does a lot. This is a staple in my shop uh, at home. I'm always using this thing um, to just tune up parts and do exactly, that's most common stuff I just showed you. I probably use it almost every day for one of those, uh, one of those things. So uh, that's all I got for this tool. Uh, make sure you can hit eastwood.com or if you're watching this on uh, Eastwood website, you can see it underneath or also check the comments. We got a link where you can go right to the product itself. Uh, you can get more information. We have a little short little video there as well that you can watch. Gives a little more detail. Um, and you can, of course, purchase one if you need one. So that's all I got for today, guys. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you tune in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every week at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We're doing something cool in the garage. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'll catch you later.